I'm Ty Lock and you are? I'm um, Terry West. Ter Flesh for the Beast. Sorry. Flesh for the Beast. Man, I saw that film. It was really good. You got me psyched Thank into it. Thank you very so, much. can you explain to me what got you inspired for this horror film? Uh, well, I'm a big fan of European horror movies like uh, Fulci, uh, Argente, um, you know, even. Uh, like, I, I like old school horror. I like the very excessive horror. I don't think they do enough of it these days. So, when the opportunity came to work for Media Blasters, they, their whole, their biggest market is European horror. So I told them, I said, well, why don't we make something that's, you know, almost like in a modern American version of 80s European horror, and they went for it. That's pretty much how it came to be. So, this film was kind of based on uh, an 1800 type house back yeah, it's it's based on actually it's based on a uh, on a uh, former carnival barker played by uh, Aldo Sambrell named Alfred Fisher, and um, essentially what he what he is is he's an occultist. You know he's really into the dark arts and dabbles, and he eventually settles down and acquires this mansion and um, turns the mansion into a brothel, and he has all these uh, you know uh, 1800s like. Uh, prostitutes and uh, essentially what happens is they all kind of mysteriously disappear uh -huh. and a uh, hundred years later this man acquires the house brings in a team of parapsychologists to uh, investigate all the harsh like sort of you know hauntings going on there and it kind of takes place from there so explain to me what is this thingy mask looking thingy oh this is actually one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, castings of one of the actresses um, from Flesh for the Beast. It's missing the teeth. Um, essentially, I sat down with a uh, effects people and an artist, and they asked me how I wanted the the creatures to look, and I essentially told them I wanted to look like sharks on feet. That I wanted them to not have any type of uh, you know human emotional trait that I wanted them to have black eyes and no nose and just rows and rows of teeth. So that's pretty much what we based it on because I essentially wanted them to look like when they turn into these creatures, the ultimate predator. Uh -huh. You know, something you can't reason with, something you can't say, please don't hurt me. Like when you see them, you know, they're just going to rip you like a new like, one. Like, oh, no. Okay, right. just mm -hmm. get it done with. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's been kind of difficult. Uh, I don't, I can't breathe through my nose, only my mouth. Um, eating is a real chore. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's just been an eye opener. <laughs> the demon makeup was extremely, extremely uncomfortable. Um, I wanted to get rid of their noses because I, I felt that, you know, it's, I, I, I wanted to remove any you know, remote human trait, and to me the noses had to go. And unfortunately, you know, that, that put them in a very, very uncomfortable spot.
trying not to look at myself in the mirror because um, it's really scary. <laughs> so there, how many girls were there? Three um, there were three girls that played uh, the, the main uh, succubus characters. Uh -huh. It was uh, Ruby LaRocca, Barbara Joyce, Caroline Horman. Mm -hmm. You know, and that with the, the guy himself. And uh, Sergio Jones played uh, the main character, John Stoker, who's the guy that's acquired the house in modern times. You know, for some reason, him and uh, the other main guy seem to have, like, a limp. Yes. And, and they both seem to have, like, certain uh, traits well, that are similar. They're, they're supposed to, yeah. They're, there's a parallel between the two of them. See, uh, essentially... Um, like you saw at the beginning of the movie. Yes, was, I noticed uh, that. I don't think maybe mm -hmm. everyone's caught that. Right? No, no one has. Actually, not too many people have. Is yeah, that Stoker is essentially following in Fisher's footsteps. You know, sort of becoming the. He's uh, attracted to it. Because at the very beginning of the movie, uh, Stoker's a good guy. He's not the villain. I mean, he it shows. The beginning of the movie shows his first attempt in the house. And um, and that's the thing I, I hope people like. If you if you remember when he finds the amulet mm -hmm. in the skull. He like throws his head back and laughs, and if you hear, you hear Fisher's laugh on, on top of it. Is that yeah? He's slowly becoming, you know, the what uh -huh. he's slowly being seduced like Fisher was. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is the amulet. I yeah, take this it. Is, this is uh, actually a, this is actually an amulet that uh, the uh, amulet master made a uh, duplicate of it for me, and um, this is really hard to see in the film, but the whole basis of it is that it's a beetle. And there, there's a dove in the center, and it's surrounded by four serpents. And um, if you notice, there's a scene in the movie where uh, the character Sturgeon walks in and looks at the medallion. And if, uh, and when it cuts to the overhead, there, the four figures are surrounding him exactly the way the serpent surrounding the dove. It's very, very subtle, you know. But uh, like this was supposed to mean something, but. Unfortunately, I don't know how well it came across on film, but um, I always like the idea that each leg is a, is a serpent, and then there's a dove trapped in the middle between them. So yeah, it's kind of so, what I was doing with that. Um, because explain to me about these demons. Like yes, uh, you said something to me off camera about them, with, you know, traveling through dimensions and. Yeah, actually, uh, the basis. I, I wrote a story a long time ago called Carnax. Uh, and uh, that stands for carnivore from the nexus. It's sort of a thing that exists in my little fiction universe. And a carnex basically is any demon, and it's in its uh, in its uh, in its pure form. It's um, all a demon is in my universe is just an eating machine. It's just something that you know uh, that's almost like a shark in the water. And um, so what happens is that this medallion you know, draws those creatures, draws those creatures from another dimension and puts them into whatever sacrifice or subject that they're, you know, killing. So that's pretty much a premise yeah. of it, yeah. And every single one of these girls has uh, their own personality. Yes, they do. Can you explain to me each one of them yeah, and their personality? Yeah, sure. Well, when I first wrote it, I wrote very extensive little character descriptions. Um, the first one that we, we encounter is Pauline. And um, there she is right now. There's Pauline. Pauline the Pure. Come on over. Um, Come on in. And um, essentially, her personality is that she uh, she's a um, she's that um, how do I put this? She's a uh, you know the old expression um, the foreign flesh eater. <laughs> uh, essentially, um, she um, plays hard to get and. Um, you know, like uh, in her description, it's like a um, she has to be conquered. She has to, you know, be it has to be. It's a conquest to her. Um, and then we have Cassandra, who uh, who's we we call her Cassandra the child, not because she is a child, but because she has the mentality of a child. And um, that mentality, unfortunately, also you know means a really really nasty mean streak. Um, and then we have Irene the insatiable played by Barbara Joyce and that's <laughs> that's pretty much it with Irene <laughs> like Irene would rather would rather you know have sex than eat the guys uh -huh. and she's a, a, an emasculator and she's also like you know just ravenous appetite and actually in the original script there was a fourth one but I cut her uh, the fourth one was uh, Elizabeth the um, unrequited 
uh, but it was a little too much, so I cut that one out. Maybe we bring her back for the sequel, have her in there. But uh, yeah, what I really wanted to do was I wanted these girls to each, they respond to a certain fantasy that each person, that each male has, and they represent themselves as what that male wants. And uh, I mean, in the next movie, like Pauline may not have the same personality she had in this film. You don't know. Because in this film, she was responding to what the character wanted. So the next film, they could all have totally oh, so different saying, personalities. Like, gives them yeah. what they want. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they could all have totally different personalities in the next film. You know, I, mean, I don't know yet. I don't know how where it's going to go. <laughs> I am. I totally relate with my character because definitely there are times that I feel like killing the man I love or I have sex with <laughs> and tearing their faces apart. So actually, I, I'm totally in her. <laughs> My, I suppose you could force me to your will right here and now. And there's no real thing I could do about that. I get it. It's all making sense. The shower, you, this whole scenario. The house is with me. I get seduced, I get taken advantage of by a beautiful woman, and then I get my face ripped off, and she feeds on me. Action. Um, how did you feel when you took me this far? How did I feel when I... what? Oh, I was totally excited. It was great. It was a great chance to... a great challenge to do something different because I hadn't done anything like this and I love working on this. So, um, what was your favorite scene? My favorite scene? The sex, of course. <laughs> It was hard. <laughs> um, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was a great team, and I think um, yeah, it was a great team effort, and I think it was really wonderful working with everybody. We had a. Um, it was a great experience in that way and like you know it's always amazing to work on a movie because it's always like magic you work on something it's out of sequence and in the end you have like this product and it's it's uh, amazing you know <laughs> how did we at the first audition basically uh, Terry told me about the script and like about everything and I was excited from the beginning on, absolutely, yeah. When she, when she came in and read uh, for the character of Pauline, the one of the things that really impressed me about her was that um, she just, like, reached out. Like, you could see it even in the movie. Yeah. I mean, she just, like, totally just... And you could totally s suck in this guy in. And I also love the fact that she was German. Because I was, oh, the accent's great. Because we're doing a, you know, Euro-horror-style movie. It'd be great. And uh, no, I was really, really fortunate that we were able to convince her to, to do it. You know, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your time. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks a lot. And thank you for your time, thank too. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Ty Bach. Okay. Yeah. Nice All right, I'm Ty Bach, and I'm um, getting out of here. Yeah. And he wants to roll in the next one. I have to warn you, folks. This place makes Amityville look like a spinning teacup ride. I have had numerous parapsychologists and psychics here. Every attempt has failed. You were brought in to take a crack at it. Welcome to my home. So where are we heading? Into the bowels of hell. Ha, ha, ha.
I'm Zenbach, and you are? Lamar Braxton Porter. Oh, and I take it you're one of the larger heavyweight wrestlers here? I am the heavyweight here. Okay, uh, well, today did you get a chance to uh, put somebody down? You know what? You're just like all the other white guys out here, trying yeah. to just hold the black man down. I am sick and tired of being oppressed. I came here for an opportunity and all I got was hatred and discrimination. And now you're gonna stand here with your stupid little look on your face and try and interview me? What do you have to say? Because my time well, is... Well, well first, of time. All, first of all, I'm from the Lost Tribe of Vulcan. So I'm green-blooded. And I find a lot of discrimination. So I can relate to that. So, but I want to know what, you, what you've been doing. I want to share it with all those people out there on Zenbox Forte. You know what I've been doing? Yeah, I've been trying me. to lay... wreak havoc on everyone, every white boy, just like Havoc tonight. You know, maybe he got the better of me tonight, but somewhere down the line, he better watch his back. <laughs> I tell you that right now, he better watch his back, because I'm coming back, Havoc. I'm coming for you again, and again, and again, until you're out of this business. Okay. You think you're funny? You think you're funny dropping me on my head like that? You think your manager's funny coming in and interfering with our match like that? You know, maybe I only spit on him twice, but you were lucky tonight. You were lucky tonight, John Shane. You know, Havoc, I got your number. I am coming for you, all right? I am coming for you. to this music back in 71, just that I got out of the service, and uh, I heard some cats, one of them was a man called Little Walter, he did a tune called Juke, has anybody ever heard that? It's a little instrumental, if anybody want to jump up and dance, it has that groove, um, I didn't know it was in a Monica when I first heard the thing, but check it out, here it goes. <laughs>
I'm such a big Peter Jackson fan. I would have to say is, um, is Sergio playing the character of Stoker, you know, just getting um, bombarded with blood and guts from above. My character is sort of crucified on the ceiling and his innards fall out. His guts spill out and shower uh, Stoker. That's like one of the last effects in the film. That took a long time. We went through a lot of different, talking to a lot of different people how to do that. The rib cage falls open and guts fall out and it's going to be done in two shots. The first shot is going to be a shot of the body, Sturgeon's body, up in the air, pinned to a ceiling, rib cage will open, guts will fall out. Camera will be right below it, so it'll come straight down. I'm going to um, wet everything on the inside with my hand, wet the strings that are that are coming down, the intestines coming down, pack them by hand back up, take the um, the small intestines that we have, put them in there so that we'll have different areas that'll fall, and take the one large intestine that folds up like an accordion, stick that in there. I'll close the chest up. He has a pulley system that he holds, so he'll keep it closed. I'll clear out, take out the thing, camera will roll. In theory, I'll step away, he'll let go, splat, right on the camera. Action! Look good for me. Let's go rolling. Let's cut. Let's cut. Let's stay where you are. Let's get ready to roll. So Steve, get it back up. Second one is going to be um, him standing below. It's more of a downward shot, and we're just going to douse him in about eight gallons of intestines and just basically warm fake blood. And we're going to be up on the same scaffolding. We're going to, as soon as this scene with dropping the guts out of the body is done, we're going to take the body out, which leaves a big hole where the actor is going to go through. We're going to sit up there with a bucket each, basically going to target the guy right below us. He's going to look up, and we're just going to both push right down on him.